nine kilos or 152 pounds. Welterweight class, it's Shurzad Husanov of Uzbekistan against Lorenzo Aragon of Cuba. There's Husanov in the red. Aragon, the defending world champion in the blue. This is a rematch. Husanov and Aragon met in the semifinals in the 2001 World Championships in Belfast. Aragon won en route to winning one of Cuba's seven gold medals in those championships. Boy, and Aragon is a fun guy to watch, too. Your typical classic Cuban-style boxer. Boxes, punches, and is ready to work for four, for four rounds. Two minutes a round, and right in there. Doesn't ask for any quarter, doesn't give any. Coach, he was tested on the way to this final in his second fight at the championships. He faced the 2000 European champion, Bulan Ulusoy of Turkey, and Aragon eked out a one-point decision. It just goes to show you, I mean, these guys find a way to win. They just find a way to win, whether it's by one point, five points, ten points, they find a way to win. The conditioning is, be, is beyond compare. I mean, they're able to go the four, four two-minute rounds. And regardless, in every, in every change that has existed in amateur boxing, whether we've gone from the traditional scoring to the computer scoring, when we went from three-minute rounds to five two-minute rounds, back to four two-minute rounds, any way they do it, they find a way to win and they adapt to it. Now you're quick to criticize me for the overuse of a phrase, but I don't know any other way to say it other than they are the state of the art in amateur boxing. What we're going to have to see now is what happens to the program now that Alcid Seguera is gone. I think that's probably a key thing, as, as in any sport, when such a key fixture and such a, a leader who's taken a team and developed that dominance over the 20-some-odd years that he was head coach of the Cuban team, and now they're completely into a new program with a new coach, and you know they have the depth in the coaching, but is it really the same as when Seguera was there? Yeah, the head coach now is Cervalli Fuentes. Uh, he replaced Seguera, who gave up the head coaching job uh, after the Sydney Olympics, uh, Seguera's retirement, I would think, coincidental with that of Felix Savon. Oh, absolutely. Fuentes had been coaching or was on loan to Argentina, but uh, came back to take over from Seguera. And who wouldn't? I mean, if you would you rather be coaching the Argentinian team or come back and coach a powerhouse like, like the Cubans? But, you know, again, he's under a pressure situation as well, as are all the fighters. You have to live up to the bar that the, your predecessors have established for you. Aragon with the lead after one round of this welterweight final. Almost an afterthought. You know, we're seeing Aragon just work, controlling the tempo, and again, pitching a shutout. And pitching a shutout in an era where the judges are pressing the button, they're scoring blows, and he's still able to get away with a 6-0 lead. Not 12-6, not having a six-point advantage. Six-nothing, which means in two minutes, Husanov didn't land a scoring blow that three judges saw. Mentioned the Cubans placing four boxers in the finals, but it's not been a cakewalk by any standard uh, for the world's number one boxing power. A few of the country's fighters were upset early, and there probably was no bigger upset coach than the Olympic and defending world champion Guillermo Rijondo losing to... Agassi Mamadov of Azerbaijan. That loss stunned the Cubans, and it might have turned up the pressure on boxers like Aragon. Ah, oh boy, I'd like to get a hold of that one and see how that one came over, because Rijan Do, boy, was he, is he powerful. I mean, he looked like to be the next most dominant star on the, uh, on the Cuban team. Well, a scoring shot has been counted for Husanov of Uzbekistan, but uh, Aragon quickly back with uh, the point that reestablishes the six-point lead. Aragon finished off the USA's only gold medal hopeful when he beat Andre Berto in the semifinals. Berto, the last remaining American in this tournament. In fact, coach, seven Americans lost their first fights in these worlds. Uh, even if it wasn't entirely the A team for the USA here, that has to be counted as an enormous disappointment. I'm not sure about that. I'm going to wait and see and see what happens at the Pan American Games before I pass judgment on that. And I also want to wait before passing judgment on the Cuban performance here as well. Because again, like I said at the outset, that the most important thing is the Pan American Games coming up because they serve as the Olympic qualifier for North America. And I think that's where we're going to see what kind of position the U.S. is in and what kind of team the Cubans are going to have going into that tournament. Because they need to qualify. Oh, the Cubans don't have to qualify. 
qualify for the Olympics, certainly you can rest assured that they're saving their best guys to meet up with the Americans at the Pan American Games. Although most of the Cuban names we recognize, this would appear to be, for the most part, their A team. Yeah, but I think, you know, for, for them, the, everything is an A team. You know, it doesn't really matter. They're going to show up and they're going to do well at... They're going to do well at the Worlds, and they're going to come back and try to even improve that at the Pan American Games. Their preparation is somewhat different from, from, from I guess, what the Canadians or the Americans would be. They want to peak. The Americans or the Canadians want to peak at the Pan Ams. The Cubans seem to be peaking all the time. Well, back to this welterweight gold medal final. Aragon of Cuba in the blue. All business here is he's now got a five-point lead. Husanov working his way back into this one, though able to get from going from not able to land a scoring blow in the first to getting six now an uneventful road to the final for Husanov. his only real test was an 18 14 decision over his opponent from Kazakhstan in the quarterfinals second round comes to an end and Aragon leading by five but again you take a look at somebody like Husanov you take a look at some of the other fighters all these guys would have made up fighters on the Soviet team and now here they are each in their own right performing at the top level representing countries like Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan and you know perform a fixture for years on the Cuban team then over to Argentina and now back to Cuba round three underway Husanov of Uzbekistan facing Aragon of Cuba and Husanov with a lot of work to do against the Cuban, who is the defending world champion. As I mentioned earlier, uh, these two met in the semifinals in Belfast, the last world championships. Aragon, the winner there, and uh, in position to win this one. And look at the size of him as well. That decided height and reach advantage for Aragon. So obviously Husanov has no other choice but to try to get inside and get close. And when he does, Aragon's right there ready to put his shots together and mix it up between the body and the head. Very deep field in this class and some great boxers failed to get to the medals like former world champion Darrell Simeon of Romania and European champion Andrei Mishin of Russia. The one thing that the four two-minute rounds have done is it has brought parity back to the countries because when it was at three three-minute rounds, the same powers, the same countries always dominated. And now it's given an opportunity for other fighters to win, and now the upsets happen. And that, I mean, it, it's not always evident, but you're giving a much better chance to some of the weaker countries. There was a time when you can pick who was going to win just based on what country they came from, and now that's not the case anymore as is evident with, you know, the, the Thai fighters having somebody in the finals as well. And then that's almost, you know, hasn't been seen since 96. Yeah, it was three three-minute rounds for many years. They tried five twos at one point, but seem to have settled now on four two-minute rounds. I think it's a good mix with the four two-minute rounds because what it's done is, and now especially with the, 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 the judges pressing the button and according the points as they will instead of sitting on their hands, I think it's made for more action-packed performance. Five twos seem really boring and seemed long. And the judges weren't pressing the buttons either. So I think this makes for a good mix. And time was, if you had a two or three point lead, you could uh, get on your bike and survive a two minute round and maintain that lead. But now they're scoring a lot more, so they seem to have fixed that part of it. Yet you'll get the purists, myself included, who, who will still argue that three threes is the way to go. And that is the true test of, of a fighter because that last minute makes all the difference in the world. And that's where the fighters like the Cubans and whatnot were able to dominate because of their superior conditioning. No room to cheat when you're fighting three three minute rounds. Aragon maintains his lead now with two minutes of boxing to go for gold at the welterweight class. There's Aragon being tended to. Just good, smart boxing from Aragon. Nice shots on the inside. Husanov trying to get back in there, come up with the body. There was a good left hook to the head. Trying to get inside on the long arms of Aragon because he doesn't want to get hit with shots like that. The straight right hand from outside. Fourth and final round now. Husanov of Uzbekistan in the red. Aragon of Cuba in the blue. Aragon, the first Cuban we've seen in these world championships. 
least in the gold medal finals. And uh, he is poised to win gold for his country. That six points seems to be the deciding, the deciding margin between these two guys. That six nothing lead that Aragon built up in the first round is the margin that the fight's been played on here going into the last round. Husanov just can see, it seems like he could do a little more and he's not doing it and the referee's losing a little bit of control here, not breaking these guys. Husanov has to show the referee that Aragon is trying to hold on and he's got to get to work. He's not working enough if he wants to make up this, this difference in points, the difference now being seven. Husanov certainly not working like somebody who's trying to make up that deficit. So a seven point lead now for the Cuban. See, Husanov's on the inside, his hands are free and he's just not working and it's, it's Aragon who's throwing the combinations and continuing to punch while they're on the inside. Very business-like performance by Aragon coach. And Husanov just disappointing in this last round. He, he, could, he looked like he was on his way to coming back. He kept the second and third rounds even. He needed to have a good fourth round here to at least try to get close. And he doesn't look to be fighting with any kind of desire that he wants to take that. He seems to be happy to settle for silver here. And so far in the fi final round of this gold medal bout, uh, the Uzbeki fighter Husanov has managed but one point. And that will not do it. I mean, he's just not working, just not working on the inside. Referees, you know, lost control of this bout. And easy win for Aragon as Husanov did nothing in that last round to try to win it, nothing at all. So gold to Lorenzo Aragon of Cuba. He gets it on the decision, 17-9, the final count. Good straight right hands from the outside from Aragon and uh, Husanov just happy to stay out there and be on the receiving end. Husanov took the bronze in Belfast. He'll settle for silver in Bangkok, but Aragon will celebrate the gold. So the favorite in the welterweight class, Lorenzo Aragon of Cuba prevails.